You're chilling on the couch watching a movie. Sure, you've seen it a million times before and you can recite the lines along with the actors, but it's comforting and it takes your mind off the problems of the world. Right in the middle of the action-packed car chase sequence, your movie freezes. The buffering icon for your streaming app pops up and you wait and wait, and just when you're about to restart, your movie kicks in again. But now, your once HD picture looks like an old videotape from the 80s. So you restart the streaming app. That doesn't work. So you try a more aggressive solution. You unplug your modem and your router. You wait the prescribed 30 seconds before plugging back in the modem. It flashes orange. That's bad. It means you can't even connect to your network. So you pull out your smartphone, which uses a different cellular network, and you check your home ISP's website. There's a widespread mass outage encompassing several regions. The company explains there's been unprecedented sustained usage of services and it's overloaded the broadband connections to the internet in your area, though they claim to have technicians working hard to solve the issue. It's clear they have no idea when you'll be able to get online again. How likely is this scenario? There are internet outages all the time, but what are the chances of long-term sustained outages caused by the current unusually high amount of online activity? While this video focuses mainly on problems that might crop up in the US, some of these issues have already occurred and are ongoing or have the potential to occur in other countries. Due to shelter-in-place orders caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, ISPs in many countries have recently experienced a surge in traffic. In Italy, Telecom Italia SPA noted that one local landline network saw 90% more traffic in March than in February. Key internet exchanges in various European cities such as Amsterdam, London, and Frankfurt have seen a 10-20% spike in traffic since early March. But to answer your question, could the whole internet break? Chances are, no. Admittedly, the huge surge in usage means that the internet is undergoing a massive stress test right now and no one completely knows exactly how it will be affected. But the internet is made up of a countless number of independent networks worldwide, which often have redundancy baked into their infrastructures. These networks exist on millions of computers which are controlled and maintained by a variety of different people, organizations, businesses, and governments. It's highly unlikely that there will be a mass failure that affects the entire internet. But don't cheer yet. The caveat to that is there's a higher than normal possibility of mass outages. The internet will still be there, but your ability to access it might be affected. Some US cities including Houston, New York, San Diego, and San Jose have recently seen slower average speeds overall due to spikes in use. Our opening scenario assumes that you have a relatively high speed internet access. 2019 statistics estimate that 4.5 billion people, or 59% of the world's population, actively use the internet. A different 2019 study indicates that about 10%, or some 33 million Americans, don't use the internet. For both sets of statistics, there are a variety of reasons why people don't go online. But far and away, the number one reason would be lack of access, which is often tied to poverty. For some of these statistics tracking internet usage, there isn't a lot of good data that provides distinctions in those who do have access to the internet. For example, of the 4.5 billion active internet users in the world, how many have consistent, stable access? How many people access the internet via a single computer or smartphone that is shared among multiple people in a household? How many of those people only have access to the internet at work, at school, a community center, or a library? For people who do have consistent, stable access to the internet, how fast is the speed of their access? Some parts of the US, often rural and low-income areas, have been grappling with these issues for a while. Consistent internet access is affected by poverty, but it's also exacerbated by corporations who have monopolies in various regions, and a government, at both the local and federal level, that's bowed to the lobbyists and big business. Perhaps you've experienced a version of this yourself. Your home internet access is expensive, slow, and frequently glitches. Your friend who lives a block away has faster internet at a better price. However, their ISP doesn't service your area, although you live five minutes walking distance apart. The whole region where you both live is carved into seemingly arbitrary internet kingdoms with little or no free market competition. Often each internet kingdom is ruled by a single company who controls access, speed, and cost. Having low-cost, high-speed internet access for all citizens is vital. We realize right now that there are far bigger issues at stake, but we suggest that when things return to normal, you might want to take an interest in how your city and the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, addresses issues of internet access, speed, cost, the methodology used to map broadband penetration, and competition between ISPs. 
Some areas have come up with solutions to address these types of issues. For example, some school districts have taken to parking Wi-Fi-enabled school buses in the communities they serve so their students can have access to the internet to do homework. Where possible, many communities have further intensified these types of workarounds due to the COVID-19 shelter-in-place orders. Meanwhile, also due to the pandemic, the FCC has asked telephone and internet companies to sign a Keep Americans Connected pledge. The pledge includes opening Wi-Fi hotspots to everyone, agreeing to waive late fees and not to terminate customers for 60 days due to COVID-19-related economic hardships. Many companies have agreed to the pledge. Furthermore, some internet companies have temporarily lifted data caps or offered promotional pricing so that their customers can access the internet without worrying about data plans or cost overages. Rules vary, so check with your individual company for information on how they are implementing the pledge and any other pandemic-related service they might be offering. In March, Netflix announced that they were reducing bit rates across all their streams in Europe for 30 days, with the goal of reducing their network traffic by 25%. More recently, Netflix announced the same reduction for other countries including Israel and India. These measures are on top of the company's normal use of an adaptive streaming tool that automatically adjusts the quality of streaming video based on accessible bandwidth. A few days after Netflix's announcement, the European Union called on online video companies to do their part in reducing bandwidth demand. While no specific outage has yet been experienced, the government felt that it would be better to take a proactive stance and have companies temporarily ease traffic rather than experience major network disruptions. YouTube quickly announced that it would begin to stream videos at standard definition or 480p quality for users worldwide in an effort to ease internet traffic. Users can still watch content at a higher quality settings, but clips will start out in SD by default. On a video, you can click the gear icon, then select quality to manually adjust the setting. Amazon, Facebook, Instagram, and Apple also complied with the government request and have put in temporary measures of their own to reduce their video bit rates in Europe. As planned, Disney Plus launched throughout much of Europe on March 24. However, the company instituted procedures to temporarily lower the overall bandwidth utilization of the service by at least 25%. At the request of the French government, Disney pushed back the launch of Disney Plus in France to April 7. Also, the EU's government and regulatory bodies authorized the telecom operators and internet service providers to apply exceptional measures, including the throttling of online speeds, to prevent network congestion if needed. Currently, no such known government requests for reduction in bandwidth or authorization of telecoms and ISPs to throttle if necessary have happened in the US. However, it's possible government mandates could be issued if networks begin to see major or recurring outages. If your internet goes out completely, it might not even be because of a mass surge in volume. There are a number of external factors that can lead to an outage. Common issues include extreme weather events or component failures due to age or destruction from animals who like to chew on the wires or build nests. While these sort of temporary outages occur frequently due to the pandemic, the speed at which the issue is fixed may be slower than normal, and that could mean several days of going without service for you. If your internet is completely down due to a mass surge in volume, what's going on? In general, the US infrastructure is generally accustomed to certain peaks of activity at specific times of day, such as in the evening when people return from work and get online at home. Over the last decade or so, the internet has generally improved in speed and become much more reliable as connections evolved from the dial-up modems to cable, satellite, and fiber optic. Probably the weakest link is what are known as the last mile services, which are the cable broadband and fiber-based broadband services that deliver the internet into the homes. These connections tend to provide a standard internet connection rather than the enterprise-level internet services available in offices and schools. To give you a picture, most businesses and schools have pretty big pipes to carry internet traffic, compared with most homes using a garden hose. Furthermore, those garden hoses share a neighborhood node that may also face congestion. ISPs use a number of modern network technologies to handle congestion in real time, often letting them intelligently and automatically deprioritize the traffic of heavy users in overburdened areas as needed. Unfortunately, you'll just have to sit tight if your service goes down. ISPs are very aware of the spikes in activity. Many are increasing capacity on their networks as needed, with potential to upgrade networks and add emergency roll-in cell towers that are used to keep people online during natural disasters. There's a chance your internet could be limited or go down deliberately as the world deals with the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Many hackers, trolls, and online theft rings are using this disaster as an opportunity to be malicious or try to steal or ransom sensitive company information which may be more vulnerable than usual as many employees are currently working from home. Various cybersecurity attacks may result in temporarily causing particular websites to go down and internet congestion or outages. Over the last several weeks, cybersecurity incidents targeting the World Health Organization and their partners have skyrocketed. In mid-March, a group of elite hackers activated a malicious site mimicking the WHO's internal email system in an attempt to steal passwords from staffers. Thankfully, the attack was foiled. Finally, you may deliberately lose internet access based on the whims of authorities or a particular company. To be clear, we would like to point out that this threat always exists, but in times of social change or upheaval, this threat is higher. In 2016, the UN declared internet access to be a human right, but some countries such as China, Russia, and Iran throttle or block certain apps and websites if they aren't to the regime's liking. Last year, internet services were deliberately shut down more than 200 times in 33 separate countries. It happens less in non-authoritarian countries, but it still happens. In April 2019, the British Transport Police shut down the Wi-Fi on London's tube network during a protest by climate change activist Extinction Rebellion. While the threat of a complete internet shutdown isn't high in the US, never say never. However, what's more likely is that an internet company censors particular websites and apps. America is still wrestling with net neutrality. It isn't too impossible to believe that in a time of great social unrest, some companies could seek to further their agenda or, under pressure from the government, limit access to certain websites deemed undesirable. So now that you reached the end of our video, why not keep the watch party going? 